Welcome, Valley Life. How's everyone doing good? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited for this morning. Um, I hope you are, too. Go ahead, everyone, just stand to your feet. I know you just sat down, okay? Go ahead and stand to your feet if you are able, all right? Um, And as we're about to have service, get into worship and all that kind of awesome stuff, okay? Um, We're going to just... Prepare our hearts, prepare our, our minds for, t- for to this morning, yes? Oh, come on, church. You guys doing good? Yeah. Come on, guys. If you need coffee, this is the back there, okay, right? But let me just pray real fast and we'll get into this whole thing. I pray, Jesus, over this congregation. I pray, Father God, you just surround each and every person in this room. Uh, the persons that are still on the road on their way here, Father God, I pray, Father God, you give them protection, Jesus. And, Father God, we just give you this Sunday. And we acknowledge you and we thank you. In your powerful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before we get to worship, go ahead and walk around and say hello to at least one person. before we just enter in some worship. Dear Heavenly Father, I just, I thank you that we get to be here today. I thank you we get to gather and we get to just worship and we get to just hear about your word, Lord. I ask that you just come fill this place right now, Lord. May our distractions leave the room and may your presence just fill us up right now, Lord. We ask that you just meet us here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I come on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. 
one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late. It's working all things out. Working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valleys. Yes, I will bless your name. And yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. All my days, oh yes, I will. fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out, working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against, and yes, I will sing too high in the lowest valley. Your name, and yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I Skies with endless praise, endless praise. 
shout your name.
church. Let that not just be a song, but an anthem of your life. That he is so good. He will never let you down. No matter what circumstances you face, you go through, 
No matter what phone calls you receive, he would never let you down. He is so good in every circumstance. He is so good. I pray, Jesus, over this congregation, over this body, Father God. You are such a good God, a good Father. You would never let us down. And even though we might feel we let you down, Father God, you remind us we are your children. So, Father God, I pray, Jesus, for any person any family that are sick in body, finances are scarce, the covers are, are bare. Father God, remind them how good you are and your sovereign. You're still on the throne. So, Jesus, may that be an answer for our life. And you are good. So Jesus, we love you, we thank you, we honor you, we uplift you. We acknowledge you in the room. In your name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Hey guys, let me ask you a worship, go ahead and find your seats, okay, which is right behind you, okay, all right. Um, I, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, and uh, what was happening here at VLC, okay? Um, if you guys didn't know, okay, uh, we have bulletins, right, out in the lobby. You should receive one. If you not not receive one, there should be some extra there. If not, there's actually stuff online for you as well, too, okay? And so uh, the first thing I want to uh, mention, okay, as some of our, um, an- like our announcements, our events, okay, is that uh, an event happening on August 16th, um, with the uh, with the small groups, okay, it's uh, with fellowship with Jim Pike and Pastor Chris, okay, and the other small group leaders. There's no cost for that, okay. I love this thing. It's called Eat, Learn, and Share. I like that, okay. Eat, Learn, and Share, right? Um, and so, where this 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 is a meeting where uh, uh, they will teach, okay, they will sh- teach you how how to do a small group, uh, uplift you, and feed your bellies, okay, which is always good, right? Um, another one is this is uh, for our prime timers, okay? Uh, picnic in the park. That sounds so pleasant, okay? Picnic in the park with a sing-along. That's so awesome, okay? Um, and that's going to be August 15th at 11 a.m., okay? Food is provided. Uh, donations accepted, okay? Uh, if you want to uh, sign up for that, okay? Uh, in the lobby, there's a sign-up sheet right there, okay? Another one is this is... Uh, uh, the youth group is going to an arcade, which is awesome, okay? It's the arcade in town, uh, Galaxy One, okay? Um, and it's going to be August 16th from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., okay? So if you want to get rid of your teenagers for a little bit, hey, yeah, give them to me, okay? And I'll have them play video games, okay? They go from one set to the other set, okay? That's awesome, all right, okay? Um, and that was really, really fun, okay? Uh, the VLC kids are having a summer fun on August 23rd, okay, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. It's water, play, and popsicles. I love popsicles. Who loves popsicles? Okay, right? And I love getting people wet, okay? So I may or may not show up with uh, maybe a, like a water balloon or such, okay? I uh, get some little kids. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. All right. I'll get my kids. All right. I'll just see Levi and just go bam like that. Okay. All right. Um, and what is this? Uh, I love breakfast. I love hanging out with other dudes. Okay. All right. Uh, August 26th um, at 8.30. Okay. Uh, it's for a fellowship, a coffee, all that kind of greatness. Um, and then breakfast at 9 a.m. Woo. Okay. Um, I love spam. I love bacon. And I love carbs. Okay. All right. And so all the guys out there. All right. Um, just come out, eat some food, eat some spam, okay? Hear the word, and you can't, can't go wrong with that, okay, all right? All right, so another one is this, which is really awesome. And this is like, this is like, a, like a save the date for our ladies, okay, for our women. It's called the Inspire Women's Evening of Fellowship, okay? Inspire Women's uh, Evening of Fellowship. It's going to be Sunday, um, September 24th. At 5 p.m. at, now guys, I might say this name wrong, okay? So, okay, all right? So I'm, I really do apologize. If I did say it wrong, please correct me, all right? Is it McVib? Mc, McVib? Okay, you guys know what it is, right? Okay? 
McMinnville, right? Okay. All right. Hey, guys. Woo. All right. Sometimes my Mexican accent comes out a little bit and sometimes hard to pronounce stuff. Okay. All right. And so it'll be there. Okay, guys. I said one time. That's all you get. Okay. And, uh, all right. Uh, the cost is 20 bucks. Um, the sign-up sheet will be available soon. Okay. For my ladies. Okay. Um, and so with this, guys, all right, I'm going to have our uh, children be dismissed along with our special music that come up here, okay? Um, I'm going to have our ushers get ready, all right, for today's tithes and offering. Um, and guys, once again, like I always say, as, um, as you're doing this a form of worship, you're also investing in the kingdom. You're investing in, in what God wants for, the, for Dallas where God wants for your neighbors, where God wants for your families, okay? So you're just investing into that. And so uh, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to have my ushers come forward, okay? And then uh, you guys will enjoy some awesome, awesome, awesome music, okay? I'm so excited. You guys, you, she sounds really good, okay, All right? And so uh, let me pray, and then we'll take today's uh, tithes and offering. I pray, Jesus, um, over this time, I pray, Father God, that you would just cover the offering, Jesus. You would just multiply it and multiply it and multiply it so that we can reach at least one more person for the kingdom of God. So Jesus, we love you and we thank you and we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Ushers. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Self, I belong to you. 
cross where your love poured out and bring me to my knees lord i lay me down and rid me of myself i belong to you oh lead me lead me to Today is a new day. It will bring brand new blessings and brand new battles. But within every uncertainty, there is hidden possibility. So I don't dread any challenge that lies ahead because I remember all the victories behind. And my confidence is not in my circumstance. The Spirit of God is my supply. I'm steady under pressure and I'm ready for whatever because whatever comes my way today, the outcome is I overcome. Christ is in me. I am enough. I can handle it. I can't afford to stay afraid or let my faith hesitate. My purpose is at stake. And he who called me is faithful. His strength in me is greater than any pain I feel or enemy I face. The promise of God is mine for the taking. Every plan he has made is guaranteed to come to pass. It will happen. If I don't back down, if I won't let go, it will happen. If I don't stop short, if I won't sell out, it will happen by faith. But faith doesn't take the fear away. It teaches me to fight it. So bring the battle. I'm ready now. I got something for Goliath. I can handle it. My power flows from presence. So I won't stay stuck in what was or worry about what will be. My regrets have been redeemed and my tests have become my lessons. My focus is fixed and my heart is expected. I'm set. I'm not nervous about what's next because my eyes are on the throne. I trust the one who's in complete control, the one who already knows how he's going to work it according to his purpose. Even the worst situations are sure to turn in my favor. If I keep moving forward, keep moving toward him, God is with me in this moment. And whatever happens, I can handle it. I know my help comes from above. So if fear insists on knocking, I'll meet it at the door. Life might give me bad news, but I've still got a good report. I can handle it. If I fall, if I fail, I'll handle it. Grace will give me what it takes to carry on. I can handle it. I have humbled myself under the mighty hand of God. Christ is in me. I am enough. And when the time is right, he'll lift me up. Till then, the lion may roar, but I see his leash. So I keep moving forward, because I've been down before, but my hope knows how to bounce back from rock bottom. What I need, God's got it. Church, come on. You guys ready? Oh, come on. Don't give me some fakeness. Come on now, church. Are you guys ready? I am so ready for what God's going to want in your life. I am so ready. Um, I am so ready for what God wants in your life because he knows there's so much potential inside you. Too often, too long have we been in the mindset of, I can't handle it. When God's saying, you can handle it. The battle is very won. You just have to take the victory. He has given you. Say, so here it is. Take it. 
I'm church, I'm gonna, I'm gonna psych you up, I'm gonna rile you up, okay? And I'm gonna say this to you. Um, if the message is good, say amen. If it's really good, give me a hallelujah. If it's really awesome, go ahead and dance, okay? Because here it is, the gospel should not be quiet. The, the, the fire of God should not be a whisper. If you, are, you can get excited for an NFL team winning, you can get excited for a WCW match, okay, right? You can get excited for Jesus Christ in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 And so I, I'm excited, guys. I'm, I'm, I've been praying for this. I've been seeking God for you. I've been, I've been in my office just saying, God, what do you want me to say to these people? What do you want me to say? And so I feel like this is the, the, the message that God wants from, 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 from me uh, to give to you. And so if you have a, a notepad, if you have your phone out, uh, go ahead and bring that out because I, here it is. You obtained about 70 to 75% more when you write stuff down than when you hear it, okay? And so the reason why, I also the youth kids this, the reason why you write things down, stuff in the message, uh, the verses, whatever it is, because you can always go back to your journal, always go back to your phone, and God can remind you what you heard can still be applied to your circumstance then and now, okay? And so uh, if you're writing stuff down, my title of my message is called The Fight, okay? The Fight. What is it called? The fight. Thank you so much, okay? And so uh, I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. I just keep saying that because I truly am absolutely 100% am uh, ecstatic, what God wants for you, okay? So um, if you have your Bibles, open up to Ephesians, okay? Open to Ephesians uh, chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. And it's, it's one of these things where it's, it's like, okay, all right, God, give me it, man. He said, Here it is. It says this in verse 3. Blessed be the God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, even as he chooses him uh, in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined, I love that word right there, he predestined us for adoption. That just absolutely, can you imagine, just fathom right for a second, predestined. He, he already chose you before you were even born to be a part of my family. To him as sons and daughters, come on now, right? Through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace, okay? You are a chosen people, you are a blessed people. You are adopted and redeemed, okay? Walk around like you're a child of God. Walk around with the authority that God has given you. If you're a Christian today, God has given you authority, okay? Literally every step you take, the foundations of hell is self-shake, okay? The devil does not want you to get up and talk to someone about Jesus. He doesn't want you to. He wants you to be quiet, okay? He wants you not to be, like, be scared or be nervous and not speak up. For me, I love being a youth pastor. I also love pushing uh, uh, teenagers to the potential that, that, that they need to see themselves in. Because I, I've seen teenagers do so much greatness, okay? And too often, I always talk to teenagers and adults, okay, that the word of nervous, I'm too scared. I don't want to, I have a hard time speaking in public, okay, all right? And I get that. I get it, trust me. Like right now, like, I might seem confident, okay, right? But I am also nervous, okay? I'm also scared beyond this stage because here it is. Uh, every word I say can and potentially uh, take you to a direction this way or take you to a direction that way, okay? So it is nervousing, all right? But the late Billy Graham once said this. If you're, if you don't, if you're not nervous speaking about the word of God, those are the times that you should be scared, Okay, all right? So here, for if Billy Graham, okay, you guys know who Billy Graham is, yes? All right? If Billy Graham was nervous and was scared, then it's okay for me to be that same way too, right? Okay? All right? And so you need to know that this, you need to know the identity you have. 
You need to know, you need to stand firm with what God wants for you, okay? You need to stand firm. You need to understand this, that once again, you are chosen, blessed, adopted, and redeemed, okay? See, David knew that. David, okay, and uh, we're going to be reading out of uh, 16 of 1 Samuel, okay, all right? But you guys know David and Goliath, okay? If not, we'll rediscover it again, okay? But David knew who he was. He knew that God had his back. He knew that God had his back. David remembered while he was facing all kinds of challenges. See, everybody knows him as what? The underdog who took on an actual giant, okay? Who took on an actual giant. Not Andre the Giant, okay? Nope, right? Not the big show. You guys know who that is, all right? All right? He took on an actual giant. But also, David could also tell you this about overcoming family struggles, Okay? Who's ever had family struggles, right? Okay, right? Um, he, is, he dealt with conflict at home, not just out on battlefield. You see, David was the youngest of a big family. He was also the shortest among them, right? And nobody in his life took him seriously uh, between his youth and his size. And even his own dad, Jesse, okay? In fact, when the prophet Samuel uh, showed up to Bethlehem, to anoint the future king of Israel uh, among the sons of Jesse, right? The older man introduced Samuel to all the boys, right? Except for David. They looked apart, right? They looked tall. They were tall. They were intimidating, okay, right? And just like the current uh, king of Israel, right? But we're told in Samuel 16, 14. 16, 14. And as we're talking about the fights, okay, as we're talking about the fights, um, my, my goal in, in preparing you how to fight, okay, is how to fight the enemy, how to read your word, okay? And sometimes when you read the word, it can get confusing. Who's ever, <coughs> oh my goodness, who's ever read the word and it's like, what does that mean? Anybody in here? Okay, there's just maybe two people in here. Okay, everyone here is Bible scholars, okay, right? Right, but there's some times when I'm reading the Bible, right, where it's like, what does that mean, okay, right? And so if you jumped to 1 Samuel 16, okay, verse 14, all right, and we're going to read it real fast because it's a short, short little verse, but I'm also going to expand on it as well too, all right? If you have your Bible, it's actually uh, the verse up there as well too, okay? Now, in this, now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul— and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. Okay, all right? You hear that? Tor- spirit of the Lord tormented him, right? When I, fir- when, when, I, when I first read that long ago, I was quite confused, okay? And are you guys, some of you guys confused about that too as well too, okay? So we're going to expand on it, all right? We're going to touch on this just for a little bit, okay? Because here it is. Um, I don't want to like skip verses kind of thing and leave you guys like reading like chapter 16 and 17 and it's like, well, wait, why does it say that for, okay? So this is a preparation so you understand what scripture means and how to apply it to your life, how to study it, how to grow from it and not just expect the pastors of the staff to feed you, okay, the word, right? Uh, we're supposed to feed ourselves, okay, right, okay? Uh, we're going to have uh, Papa Chris uh, feed you the word all the time. Okay, right? Okay. You do it yourselves. You guys still with me? Yes? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And so th- I'm going to give you a little more insight in this verse, right? When you read through the Bible, you will come, what's going to come called verses that are difficult to understand. And so what do you do when this happens? Do you just give up, right? You just, oh, forget, forget the Bible, I guess, and you toss it, right? Do you burn it? What do you do, right? Do you just, like, just leave it there? As an awesome, like, you know, like paperweight kind of thing, okay, right? What is it? Um, in this passage, it's difficult, and it says this, right? God sent a harmful and tormenting spirit upon King Saul, okay? And here are my three C's, okay? My three C's I do personally when I look at difficult verses, when I study the word and I prepare for sermons, okay? And these are the three C's I do personally for me to understand Scripture. Um, a lot of you guys know about my testimony, okay? I grew up um, in the ghetto kind of thing. And so I do nothing about the Bible, absolutely 
100% nothing about the Bible, okay? Only, only word of Jesus I knew was Jesus. That's all I knew, okay, all right? And so I had to, knew, I had to say, God, you saved me. You love me. I want to know who you are, okay? So how do I do this? So these are my three C's I do when, when I do this, all right? The first one is this, is to compare, okay? Take it on notes. It's compare. Compare it in multiple translations, right? The thir- second one is this, is to examine the content of the passage. Examine the content of the passage. And the third one is this, uh, consider what other Bible passages say about the subject, okay? Consider what other Bible passages say about the subject, okay? Uh, compare translations, just there are times, right, we understand something. When someone says it just a slightly different way, right? Um, maybe it's a, it's a different words, right? A different, trans, a different way of saying it. That we understand it differently, right? And maybe it's like, oh, God, oh, that makes sense now kind of thing. So sometimes when reading scripture, when reading different translations, okay, it makes the passage, makes that verse a little bit clearer, Okay. And there are many translations that you can find easily online, okay, or the Bible app. Uh, if you need help finding stuff on the Bible app or how to download the Bible app, talk to Pastor Jesse. He'll help you, okay? He loves that kind of stuff, okay, right? And so and he'll be very, very patient with you, right? And so um, I want to, so in which ones, like, so I want to encourage you, right, which ones to look at. Where are some ones to look at, Right? There are two of the more popular translations. is the NIV, right, and the CSB. And they put it in this way, okay? The NIV says this. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and the evil spirit of the Lord tormented him, okay? And the CSB says this. Now the, Lord, the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the evil spirit, evil spirit sent from the Lord began to torment him. There are footnotes, okay, right? There are footnotes in NIV, right, that uh, saying that evil can also be rendered as harmful, right, which also says in the ESV, which I'm reading, you guys don't know where I'm reading from, it's ESV, okay? Actually, I love this Bible so much, I asked my youth students, okay, I said, guys, I need a new Bible, right? I need a new one. Can you guys help me out real fast? Here are a few options, okay? And then all the youth kids all said this one here. It's so awesome. It has, it has an awesome, like, line on it, okay? It's really, really cool, okay? And so I, I told them, hey, guys, from now on, I'm going to preach from this Bible because, uh, one, you guys picked it out for me, okay? I'm going to do it, right? So you guys need to know I'm e- reading out of the ESV, which is English Standard Version, okay? Um, and so... One of them can look at, look at the most literal translations, okay? The most literal translations. It's a New American Standard Bible, okay? Which translated like this way. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit of the Lord terrorized him. Okay, terrorized, that's crazy, okay? Now NLT says this. It's a translation. And I'm saying all this stuff to you guys this, okay? All right? There's a reason why I'm saying this to you all this. There's different translations. There's different ways of saying it, okay? Matter of fact, it's also a different way with, with, with uh, translations comes with like reading levels, right? And so if you're reading levels like, you know, wherever it is, okay, there's also translations that you can read, right? That makes sense, right? Some of you can make sense of yeast and yaws, okay? I don't. I don't know what that means, okay, right, right? Um, but some of you just, all right, but there's different translations. I'm saying this because this is how you prepare yourself. This is how you prepare yourself for the fight. This is how you grow up. This is how you reach and study the word, okay? So if you can get confused on how to study the word, look at different translations of the Christian Bible, okay, right? The reason I'm saying it. So an NLT is by top scholars. This is less literal, okay? They're trying to get the idea rather than the word-for-word likeness. And it puts it a little bit differently. It says this, Now the Spirit of the Lord, okay, left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear, okay? A footnote also says this, can be translated as the evil spirits. So there are other translations you can look at, but they'll probably be starting to look the same over time, okay? And start to sound the same over time. And unfortunately, right, in this passage, in this situation, I don't think this other translation helps, right? Maybe you're a little confused, right? Maybe I left you a little confused, okay, right? Um, but since the, the term evil as opposed to harmful, all right? So where do we turn from this? Really quickly, okay, uh, who, who's ever in charge of the AC? This Latin man is getting a little sweaty, okay? So can we please put the AC down just a little bit, okay? 
I'm going to start speaking Spanish because I'm going to just be like, you know, okay, right, kind of thing, all right? And so please, whoever's in charge of the AC, put it down before I put this water on my head, all right? Can someone say amen? amen. Okay, all right. Thank you for AC, Jesus. Okay, all right? So, all right, so in other words, this, it's to examine the content, all right? Examine it, right? Words had meaning, yes? Yes. When used in a sentence, and sentences have a meaning when used in paragraphs. Awesome, okay? And paragraphs tell a story or give a message. So it's important to not just look at a word or a sentence, but rather the whole story, the communication. What is the author trying to tell us here? What is the author trying to tell you? The content of this passage is that God has sent a spirit, okay, upon Saul when he became king after multiple uh, times of disobedience. God rejected Saul from being king and selected a new king, a kid named who? Thank you, all right? Upon whom God sent his spirit. First Samuel 14, all right, tells us that the spirit of the Lord leaves Saul. And a troubling spirit comes, right? And the context shows us that that is not something that is done by random. But God, but rather a punishment of disobedience. The tormenting spirit, okay, is not sent to an innocent man, but one who's continually uh, rejected God's word. Likewise, this is what happens to a person who was to play a key role for God as king and given a special gift of the spirit to do so. Not just a random person, but in God, in his grace. And God is so graceful, Yes. Isn't it so awesome how, how, how awesome God is and how great he is, right? Like you read in, in Genesis, right? He's saying like, like if you eat this fruit, you will surely die. Like, you, like it, will, it will kill you in a sense, right? And it, it, this is a cool thing about God, right? Really quickly, let me say this fast. For the, for the parents and people who are in here, um, who's ever gave your kid a timeout? Okay? <laughs> I did. I mean, this, this was it. This morning, I think it was. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So, all right. So, all right. Who's ever given, who's ever been on timeout? Anybody been on timeout? Okay, okay, all right, all right. I've been on timeout. I think so. I'm not sure. All right, all right. And what do we do with our kids? We put them on timeout. Anybody know? Right. Go to your room. Go somewhere else. Right. Um, or go to the hallway or a calm corner kind of thing. Right. Okay, kind of stuff. Right. That's what we do. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. And so, you know, God can't be around sin. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure, okay. I'm not trying, guys, hear me out. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not, okay, right? Yeah, I'm not, all right, okay? No, all right? So, and the cool thing about Genesis, right? Like, he, in a sense, put Adam and Eve on timeout, okay? But, like, here's the thing is, okay? Not only did God put them on timeout, but hear, hear this word, hear this, please, hear this. God also put himself on timeout. What? Because here it is, okay? He, they went out to the garden, right? Out to the garden. Like literally a few words later, a few verses later, what are they doing? They're talking with him, okay? So he pretty much went with them out of the garden and said, I'll go with you. Can you imagine for my parents in here, if you put your kid on timeout and you sat down, went down with them, how confused would they be, right? Okay, All right? Because there's some times where uh, when my sons are on timeout, I'll sit with them and they just stare at me and I'm like, I'm not supposed to move. I was like, yes, no, it's kidding, okay, right, okay, all right. So it's like it's the thing. It's like he, he goes with you. And that's how, how graceful he how grace he has of you. Even in your disobedience, he goes with you. Even in disobedience, he talks with you still. And even though you might mess up, young person, which you will, he'll continually be there for you. Continue to be, be there for you. And that's how God is. He's so graceful. He's just it's full, so much full of grace. And it says this, right? And God gives his grace. That's not given just, he gives relief to Saul through David's music. Through David's music. And it says this, that whenever a harmful spirit of the, from, the, from God was on Saul, David took his lyre, played with his hand, and Saul was refreshed and was well and the harmful spirit departed from him. See, when I read that verse right there, church, I imagine what, that's what worship does for you. If you're being tormented, 
You're feeling depressed. You're feeling hurtful. You're feeling away from God. The one thing we need to do is this. It's not, not, not separate ourselves from the church. Separate ourselves from the body. Not turn off Christian music and put on like Dr. Dre, right? None of that kind of stuff, right? What we need to do is come to God in our mess up. Come to him. That's the only, hear me out. That's the only thing that would give you relief. That's the only thing that would uplift you. That's the only thing that when words, because words matter, yes, yes they do. And when mom says that one thing, when your husband says that one thing, when the workplace says that one thing, and you're suddenly feeling so defeated, you're feeling such a, a loser, and you're feeling like, oh my goodness, like, I just have no relief. Go and worship your God, the Father. and He'll meet you where you're at. I, I imagine God's a good father. I imagine him every time you're in your midst of your tears, the midst of your defeat, the midst of you feeling low and lowly places, and you're literally at the foot, foothold, the foot of your bed, and you're wailing to God. God is not some God. He's like over there. He's like he's right, sitting right there next to you. He sends the spirit of God next to you and says, I'll give you relief. I'll be there right, right there with you. I have not left you or forsake you. Because that's what a good father does. In the midst of their of the child's uh, brokenness and a child's mess up, right? Too often we let our anger get the best of us. But all the while God's saying this, be gentle with your kids. Sit down with them. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge those feelings and walk them through it. And that's what God does for you. All right, so the, how about this? Consider what the, Bible, the rest of the Bible says. How about this? Consider what the rest of the Bible says. And sending um, the Spirit, right? Saying the Spirit, does it mean that God is the source of evil things? What was that again? No. Say confidence, please. Okay? No. Thank you. All right, okay, all right. Something in remembering this, and we read, okay? And if, guys, all right, get your Bible. Okay, if you don't get, if you don't have a Bible, get one, right? If you don't have one, put on your f- smartphone, okay? Because I'm going to be going through some verses, okay? All right? And so, um, so we read that God does not tempt someone else, someone with evil, okay? So if you have your Bibles, okay, open up to James chapter 1, okay? James chapter 1, okay? Chapter 1, starting in verse 13, it says this. Let no one say he is tempted when he is tempted. I am being tempted by God. For God cannot tempt with evil. And he can himself tempt nobody. Okay? Tempt nobody. God is not the cause of evil. Another interesting portion of scripture to note is the book of Job. Okay? The book of Job. Not the book of Job. Okay? The book of Job. Right? And we see it in uh, Job chapter 1. Okay? So Job chapter 1, starting in verse uh, 21, okay? And it says this, all right? Um, and this is what Scripture says, okay, right? And he said, right, naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked, oh, I'm sorry, let's stop there, okay? I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord, okay? God is not the cause of evil, okay? He is not the cause of evil, Another interesting portion of scripture to note in that, okay, is that it gives us insights about it, about Samuel 16, 14, as it's describing an action, right? If you never read about the book of Job, right, it describes the actions of the devil, but rather the focusing on the secondary cause of it. It's the work of the devil, okay? The work of it. It reminds us that all things, okay, all things, everything that happens, is under the sovereignty of God. And I know that's come hard, sometimes a hard pill to swallow, right? Because when, I, when you hear that, right? When you hear that, other things pop in your head, right? Yes? Okay? Like other circumstances, other situations you face. But know this. Hear me out, church. God is still on the throne. He's still in control. He still will supply the strength Supply the courage. Supply you the door. Supply you the path. Supply you the forgiveness. Supply you the redemption. Supply you the healing. He is literally still on the throne. 
And it's also worth noting in the New Testament, people who are afflicted by demons, which can be described as evil spirits, but that these demons can't be cast out by Jesus. They acknowledge that Jesus can command them to leave if so desire. And just because of time's sake, okay, I thought about reading uh, Mark 5, okay, but for time's sake, um, we can't just digest everything, okay, right? And so I'm going to leave you with homework, okay? Yes, I'm going to leave you with homework, okay? All the teachers are like, yes, okay, right? Um, leave you with homework. And I want you to go home uh, before you have dinner tonight, and maybe in midst of you having a steak with your kids, okay, right? Um, open up to Mark 5. Oh, you feel that AC in there. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Mark 5, okay? Mark 5. What, what, what was it again? What was it again? Can you say it really fast? Mark 5. Yeah, Mark 5. Okay, right? Okay, Mark 5. And it's so awesome, okay? Because we read the scripture, right? And you can read the scripture, and the way it's translated, right? and the uh, English translation of the historical events, okay, that literally this demons, these demons, this legion, okay, is literally, is begging, is pleading, is going before Jesus, right, and saying, don't do this for us. Don't, 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 don't send us away kind of thing, right? Like, really quickly, when you're praying, what do you do? You're pleading to God. You're asking God. You're asking God to intervene. You're being, Jesus, be there for us, right? And it's so awesome, right, that even, even they, like, plead to Jesus because they know the power that Jesus has, that he can literally cast them out if he, if he wanted to, okay? So if you want to read it, read that, okay, Mark 5, okay, right? Mark 5, right? When you look at this passage, right, in 1 Samuel, it's describing God withdraws, right, his spirit from Saul. At that time, under his sovereign rule, God allowed the forces of evil that Saul had exposed himself through his disobedience. It wasn't like God did this, like, oh, I'm going to do this to you kind of thing. No, like Saul did it to himself, right? And hear me out. Sometimes because of our own, like, you know, flawed humans, because we're flawed, right, we have this thing called what? Flesh, okay, right? And we just mess up, okay? And it's okay to mess up because we can go to the Father, right, and say, God, forgive me. And he's already there. He already met your forgiveness, okay? And so, see, through his disobedience, and the thing is here, here it is, church. Hmm. Through your disobedience, God is still there with you. Through your, your doubts, God is still there for you. Through your anger with him, he is still there for you. God has chose you. Hear me out. God has chose you. It's much like this. It's much like if God said this to you, right? If you could line up generations of people, right? Generations of people and line them up and says this, I will choose you each and every time. It's much like this for the people who ever adopted somebody, right? Adopted a kid. It's much like this. Of all of the kids I could have adopted, I would choose you each and every time. And that's what God says to you. But, and that's a dumb not teaching lesson, okay, right? But here we go. Here, here it is for you, right? That's just a, uh, like a mind exercise. Now, this is how to apply it to your life. You guys ready for this? I guess or not. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to splash with you guys. You guys need to wake up. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. So here it is. Okay. Um, God has his eye out for different qualifications. He has his eye out for different qualifications. His focus um, was on traits like this. The heart. Humility. The faith. With your choosing comes your calling. I'm going to say it one more time. With your choosing comes your calling, okay, right? So if you have your, your notes, it should be on the screen, okay? With your choosing comes your calling. I'm going to say it one more time. With your choosing comes your what? Calling. Thank you. The God who chose David for his team is the God who chooses you. The God who chose David is the same God who chooses you. Look to your neighbor and say this, you are a chosen person. Oh, my goodness. Look, look to your next neighbor and with excitement and say, you, God chose you. 
Come on, somebody, all right? All right, come on, church. Woo, okay, all right? It's never because this. It's never because you are perfect. You will never be perfect, okay? What? Okay, all right? Or how about this? You will never find, I'm going to say this just because I have the mic, all right? You will never find a perfect church. If you find a perfect church by you being there, now that church is imperfect, okay? <laughs> all right? And so... It's never, once again, it's never because you are perfect for God to use you, okay? You just have to be willing to change. Your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by the change. You can change. Change your mindset that you will never be used by God, that you will always be this mess up. Stop playing and hear me out. And this for five people in here, okay? Stop, being, stop walking around like a victim. Let me say it one more time. Stop walking around like a victim. Woe is me, woe is I kind of thing, right? Walk around with a victorious, okay, heartbeat. Walk around with a victorious step. Walk around because you are a chosen people, okay? Yes, life sucks, okay, right? But guess what? God is so much better than life, okay, right? Yes, circumstances happen, but God is so much better. Yes, your kids will not listen. Guarantee you, you'll get in the car, you'll have an argument about Paw Patrol, okay? And guess what? It gets better, okay, right? But once again, you are strong enough with God. Let me say it one more time. You are strong enough with God. Yes, I can literally deadlift 450 pounds, okay? Deadlift 450 pounds. I can carry some of you guys like grapes, okay, right? But yet God is stronger than that. I can, and hear me out. I, I'm not lying to you guys. I'm, I'm just saying this, okay? Who's ever heard of Feast, Feast of Strength? Anybody heard of that, Okay. Piece of strength, right? Uh, I remember I used to deal with, with youth groups, okay? I used to uh, roll a firing pans like a burrito, right? And it was so awesome, okay? You see the teenagers like, what kind of thing, okay? Or this too, I know how to pop a soda can while it being open and explode. It's really fun, okay, right? And so and God is stronger than that. He is stronger than that. But with God, you do all things. You are born to choose. God has given you a free will. How about this? Choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve the world? Will you serve God? Will you serve the circumstance? Will you serve God? Will you serve the bank statement? Or will you serve God? Will you serve the other, another phone call from the school? Or will you serve God? Who are you going to serve today? And the person sitting in this room... God doesn't open a door or open doors without supplying you the courage, supplying you the strength, supplying you the power to go through them. God closes wrong doors at the right time to keep us out of our mess. And he locks in the blessing. God wants to lock in a blessing in your life. And sometimes like, well, why you close the door for God? And God says, to keep you out of your mess. To keep you locked in what God, what I want for you. You see, God didn't remove this Red Sea, right? He opened it. I imagine that, I forgot, it's, it's a, I forgot the, the, that movie, right? Maybe it was Moses. I'm not sure what it was, right? Prince of Egypt. There it was, okay, right? I mean, the Prince of Egypt. Who ever watched Prince of Egypt? Okay, if you haven't, go home and watch it today. It's really awesome, okay, right? Like, the staff, bam, right? The water goes, kind of thing. It's really awesome, okay? And he opened it. He provided the, the dry ground. And yes, can you imagine, okay, right, that it's, it's, it's the Red Sea. It's not a lake, okay, right? Can you imagine walking like the wall higher than the ceiling and literally sea life feet from you and you're walking in and down? Like, I don't know about you guys. I'd be kind of scared. <laughs> okay, okay, right? <laughs> Okay, and he says, he'll give you the courage to walk you through. Walk you through it. Likewise, hear me out, church. He didn't remove the giant you face, but gives you the strength to behead it. Let me say it one more time, right? He didn't remove the, the giant you face, but he gives you the strength to behead it. Come on. The difference is this, that once you're on God's team, you don't just remain a player in his eyes. You become family. You become family. You become family. To paraphrase Ephesians 1, you're chosen. You're blessed. 
You're adopted. You're redeemed. Repeat after me. Say, I'm chosen. Okay. I'm telling you guys, all right, okay? So come on, guys, here it is. I'm, I'm trying to wake you up, okay? I'm trying to exercise those vocal cords. I'm trying to exercise those, that, that brain a little bit, okay? To say this, say, well, yeah, I'm chosen, right? What is that? No, come on, okay, all right? Like, walk with confidence. If you're a child of God today, walk with confidence, okay? Stop trying to hide, uh, and this is for at least three people, okay? Stop trying to hide behind your hair. Stop trying to hide behind mom and dad. Stop trying to hide behind your, your, your spouse. Okay? God says, let's walk with confidence. Walk like you have power because you do. Because if you're a Christian today, you call yourself a Christian today, you literally have authority that literally every time you step, the foundations of hell itself shakes because the devil knows that if you speak your mouth, okay? And I'm talking for... All my ladies, look at me real fast. All my ladies, let me see the whites of your eyes real fast. God has given you a lioness mouth for a reason. God has given you a message. God has given you a message. And if, hear me out, it's not just for Pastor Johnny. It is not just for Pastor Chris. It's not just for my husband or for my wife. God says this, I'm going to use you. I don't want to use them. I want to use you. Think about this. There's a reason why God has placed you in your neighborhood. There's a reason why God has given you the family line. And I'm like, really, God? Right? right? No, it's like He has given you a family line for a reason. Go and talk to them. God is even here. How about this? Well, I, I apply there. Of course, I'm there. No, God's even opened that door for you to have that job for a reason. Okay? So go and speak the gospel. And for, the, for my young people in here, God has placed you on your school campus for a reason. And I always tell, I always tell you kids this, your greatest mission field is not somewhere, it's not some other place, like Mexico, wherever it is. Matter of fact, your greatest mission field, young person, is this, it's your school campus. Well, I go to faith Christian, so they're all Christians. Like, no, okay, right, okay? Um, only because they go to a Christian school does not mean what? They're Christian, okay, right? So God has placed you there for a reason. Talk to your friends. I'm talking to the teachers as well, too. Invest in them as well, too. I'm talking to other coworkers, all right? Okay. You're chosen, you're blessed, you're adopted, you're redeemed. In order for you to remember these things, to be ready for the battle, God has put verses in these things for you to show who you are. God, hear me out. You need to start understanding your identity in Christ. You need to start staying firm in your identity with Christ. Because if all you do is you, you, you don't, like you, need, you don't know your real calling or you don't know what was happening with God in you kind of thing, Know this, that you're chosen, you're adopted, you're blessed, you're redeemed. And also this too, know who you are. Know who you are. And you might just born and raised in Dallas. That's awesome. I love Dallas, okay, right? God has placed you here for a reason. If you have your Bibles, open up to uh, 1 John, okay? Open up to 1 John. And... Um, if I can find First John, all right. First John, um, there it is. Okay, First John, uh, chapter five, verse four. And I'm giving these verses, right? So for you to highlight later or write down. And uh, I want you to do then another. Uh, I gave you a homework. I'm giving you an exercise. Okay is this, these verses, write these down. Like on, your, on your, your mirror, right? On somewhere, write it down. And repeat this over your life, over and over again. And it says this in uh, chapter 5, verse 4 of 1 John. It says this, for everyone, not just the pastors, not just the board members, says, what? 
Everyone, thank you so much, okay, right? Who has been born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Your faith will overcome the world. Your faith in God will overcome your circumstance. Your faith in God will overcome the situations you face. Your faith in God will see victorious battles. Oh my goodness, guys, all right. Uh, John 16, John 16, 33, 33, John 16, 33. And it says this. I have said these things to you, that in me you will have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You guys, um, you may have heard, like, we're living in end times, which we are, guys. Hear me out. There has not been a time where so much historical, biblical events are happening. Do you guys know this, right? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, okay? If not, I'm about to blow your mind out. Like, whoa, what the heck? Kind of thing, okay? Speaking of Red Sea, did you guys know this? That they actually did a recent discovery in literally the middle of the Red Sea. Do you want to know what they found there? They found chariots. They found horse bones. They found Egyptian armor down the Red Sea. It's not so awesome, okay? How about this? This is going to also blow your mind well. It's gonna, like, the fact that this is not being on, like, the news is, like, mind, well, it's not mind-boggling. I know why. Okay, All right, okay? All right? But did you guys know this? That once again, there, there, there's this uh, uh, Japanese... Um, people like, were like doing like these, like they're uh, examining a part of a mountain, okay, right? Oh, this is so crazy, okay? Did you guys know this? That they actually found Noah's Ark. And we mean, like they actually did like scientific research and they took, and it's like, that is. They literally found Noah's Ark. This last one is here, this. You guys ready for this? Okay. And my wife didn't believe me until she looked it up, okay, right? Is this. Once again, guys, we're living in a time where God is trying to, like, wake you up, okay? Wake you up. And once again, hear me out. It's not, it's, it, let me, before I say this last thing, okay, let me say this. I'm going to have my worship band come up here, okay? It's not this. It's, once again, church, okay, like, God didn't die, to fill up a church. God died so he could fill up your hearts. I'm say one more time. God didn't die to fill up a church, which is awesome if we do that, okay, right? He died on the cross to fill your hearts. He died on the cross so you can have a second chance. He died on the cross so that barrier between us and God would end. That with a tabernacle, that big Big barrier between us and God. When Jesus, when Jesus died, right, a big earthquake happened. It went dark. It, that, that tabernacle whew, ripped, not from down, not from up and down. It literally ripped from the bottom up. So no one can ever say, like, oh, they did that kind of thing. See, young, you see a young person in church sitting in this room today. He is giving you signs. He is giving you things. He is giving you circumstances. He is giving you the Bible. He is giving you messages to wake you up. And the devil doesn't want you to understand that. He wants to hide those historical finds. This is also going to blow your mind too as well. And this is what's one of these things where it's like, man... How did we not know this? The place that Jesus died, right? The place, the, the, the place that Jesus died, literally underneath, okay? Literally underneath. Once again, they're, they're, they were finding, they're going through this, this thing. And they literally found the Ark of the Covenant. And 
they found blood right on top. And they literally traced it to the exact spot, to the exact spot where Jesus died. You need to understand your calling. You need to understand your identity. You need to understand that this devil who's a trickster doesn't want you to know these things. He wants you, the devil wants you to walk around like a victim. The devil wants you to not say, you know what, uh, that's that's for Pastor Chris. No, that's for... uh, uh, And all the while, God's saying this to you, I want you. I want you. I want to use you. But God, I mess up. I still want to use you. But God, I've done this thing. I still want to use you. God, I, I did these things and said these things to so many people. God's saying, I still want to use you. God, I grew up in such an, in a ferocious environment. All I knew was this. God, God said, shh, shh, I still want to use you. And church, person sitting here today, no matter what circumstance you face, no matter what your past looks like, no matter what mess ups you have done or you did on, your own, on your own dime, God says this, I still want to use you. It's church, it's time to wake up and it's time to start walking into your calling. It's time to not be, your Christianity should not be confined to that pew. Your Christianity should not be confined to these walls. Your Christianity should not stop on Sunday afternoon, sometimes at one o'clock, okay? It should not stop there. If you think Christian walk is Sunday only and hearing a guy with a book tell you stuff and that's it, I'm good, I'm golden, God's saying, I want more of you. You're, you're, I want you in the fights. I want you in the fights. Church, it's time to start fighting back. It's time to forgive. I'm going to say it one more time. It's time to forgive. It's time to let go. And I wish I could have some time to tell you. And some of you guys know my testimony. I had every reason to not forgive. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, because hear me out, you can't do it by yourself. He gives you the power. He gives you the circumstance. He opens the door to forgive. Because hear me out, a lot of you, a lot of you, that's the one thing that's holding your back, your worship. That's the one thing that's holding back your walk. That's the one thing that's holding back what God wants for you. It's those things you're holding on to. God says forgive. So forgive. God says this, you're called to take your calling. Take your calling. Once again, when God calls you, he also supplies you. And your calling does not mean the giant goes away. I'll say one more time. Your calling does not mean the giant goes away. It just means that you recognize my calling is bigger than that giant I face. You see, David didn't blink. He knew whose team he was on. Now it's, it's time for you, church, to stop closing your eyes and stop wishing, go away, giant. And God said, no, I want you to face it. I know it's kind of scary, but I'll supply you the strength. I'll supply you the courage. Yes, your knees are shaking. Yes, it feels like, oh my goodness, like I'm shaking like a, a chihuahua, right? Okay, kind of thing, okay? But God's saying, I'm going to supply you the strength. He'll supply you the stone. He'll supply you the slingshot. He'll see you swinging that thing and hitting that giant between the eyes, right? And literally having that giant fall on his face. Seeing that giant, seeing you behead that giant. Can you imagine that? 
you literally behead your giants. And saying this, today is the day I have victorious. Today is the day I'm there on the coastline of my victory. I'm going to take it where God takes me. No longer going to hold back my walk. No longer going to hold back my message. No longer going to hold back what God calls me to be. No longer going to hold back my circumstances. This is the reason why I can't do it. God's saying this, move forward. Keep on going forward. I know it's hard. I know you're tired, but keep on moving forward. I know other people said doubted you, but God says keep on moving forward. I know people said certain things about you, but keep moving forward. I know you didn't get the job, but God says this, keep on moving forward. I know some of your moms might feel my identity is only a mom. My identity is only this. God says this, no, it's not. I have blessed you with those children for a reason. I have blessed you with your neighbors for a reason. Your identity does not stop at being a mom. Your identity continues to be a child of God. Everyone stand up with me, please. Everyone just stand up real fast. The fight you face, and there's a reason why I have you stand up. There's a reason why I have you stand up. Because I think, not because the pastor said, oh, here it is. I think it's time to start standing firm on your foundation, firm in your identity, firm as, look, at, look around you real fast. Look around you real fast. Firm of, this is your family. This is your family next to you and around you. And guess what? We're all mess ups, okay? We're all imperfect, okay? We're all say the wrong things at the wrong time, okay? All right? All right, we all would do that. But hear me out. The fight you face isn't there to defeat you, but to prepare you for success coming your way. If the sea couldn't stop Moses, if a wall couldn't stop Joshua, if death couldn't stop Jesus, then Christ in you, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. I'm gonna say it one more time. Nothing can stop you. I'm also gonna give you guys a last challenge is this. Last challenge, and we'll end service. The last challenge is this. Keep standing for a second. One is this, like today you recognize, hey, I have a calling. Hey, I have identity. Hey, Christ is in me. I have victory. I'm going to stop walking around as a victim. And when we, when we do that, the Holy Spirit is going to wake you up, right? How about this? I hope you have the spouse, right? Right? That says, hey, wake up, right? Stop being a victim kind of thing, okay? Right? If you're talking to your wife, say it very, very nicely, okay? Right? Hey, kind of stuff, right? Okay? But stop walking around a victim, Right? I'll say it for you, husband. Stop walking around like a victim. Okay? For your wives. Stop walking around like a victim, guys. Okay? Last thing is this. When you leave this place, you mean, you mean earth? No. I'm talking about church right now, okay? When you leave this church, when you gain your cars, when you decide where you're going to eat at, okay? When you, get your, when you gain your cars, and when you exit, the parking lot. My mentor, for the longest time, he's still my mentor, right? Um, you guys probably don't know him. Probably only, only, probably only two people in this room probably know him, okay? His name is Brett Allen, okay? He's an incredible mentor in my life. And he has this thing he, have, he has with his church. I said this, when they drive off the parking lot, you're entering into the mission field. You're entering into the mission field. Go on to your mission. Go proclaiming victories. And church, I'll leave with this and I'll pray. Go knowing that God has your back. He has not left you or forsake you. Let's pray. I pray Jesus over this body. 
I pray over these people. I pray, Jesus. Father God, wake us up. Father God, wake me up. Father God, this message was as much as for me as for them, Father God. And I pray, Jesus, in your powerful name, we tell that devil to shut his dirty mouth. Father God, give us the victories. Father God, even, even though the mountains seem high, even though the water seems deep, even though the giant seems overwhelming, even though the circumstance seems scarce, even though the relationship might seem broken, even though the blacktop bully might see, might, I might see him in the fall, even though my neighbors say things about me, even though my kids are being kids and my parents are being parents, I pray, Jesus, may we see victories in our life. May we proclaim who we are. May we shout you more and we quiet and we shut down that victim mentality. And Jesus, you have prepared our way. You have prepared our hearts. You have prepared our circumstance. You have prepared our victory. You've gone before us. You have predestined us even before we were even a thought in our mother and father's eye. Father God, you were there and you died on the cross. And Jesus, I pray, Jesus, let, let this not be a, just a feel-good message, but let this message put us into a path of victory, a path of momentum that cannot be stopped like a freight, freight train. So, Jesus, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Church, go in his grace, go in his power, and walk in victory. Amen. <laughs>